I never had to compromise myself, you know, in order to jump into situations. I was able to say no and pick and choose the right situations for me. So exactly. that was important. So fashion, when as you were developing a relationship with Miss Coco, how did you see that fitting into your world? Well, that's my baby right there. <laughs> well, we understand that part. You know, we're talking about the other part. <laughs> the professional. Yeah, we, we get that part. <laughs> so hear what I say, for it is the truth you see. There can only be one, the original. OG, two letters that define respect. Welcome to the original OGs. I created the original OGs to document the forgotten parts of American history. I want to recognize and give a voice to the men and women that have climbed to the top of their game. Believe me, the men and women that sit in front of this marquee have been authenticated as original OGs. My name is Mr. Rick. Welcome to my world, a world of the originals, the unique. Welcome to the original OGs. Welcome to the original OGs, and I'm your host, Mr. Rick. Today, we're in New York City, and I tell you, we got a treat for you. We're gonna start off with Mr. King and the fashion. I prefer to this, I like to call this brother the King, but we're gonna let him introduce himself when we get into this thing. But today, this is the true essence of the original OGs. We're gonna start with the King. Introduce yourself to the audience, Mr. King. My name is Kenny Gilmore. Most people call me KG. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, Fort Greene Projects. And uh, at one point, I was involved in a drug game, which ultimately led me to the prison system. I wound up serving 31 years for killing the deputy mayor of New York City, and ultimately, again, got released in 19, I mean, 2007. During my sojourn in prison, I met fashion, who turned out to be one hell of a guy. And what I mean by that is because at the time, fashion was better known as boxing shabal. And he came through, he was angry, he was bitter, and he caused quite a ruckus. Wound up putting in a lot of work on people. A lot of it sometimes I thought was unnecessary because he could think so much better. But it was what he felt he needed to do at that time, and nobody could tell shabal fashion what he needed to do. With that, uh, we had a lot of different situations where we fought the police. Some of our comrades got killed and murdered in there, never made it out. And, and it was sort of a difficult time, not for us, but for many others. We're not here to glorify the business that we did, but more so to tell you younger people that prison is not the way that you want to go. We're trying to give you an insight into how rough it was or how rough it could be for many people. So let me ask you, what did you see in fashion when you first saw him and decided that you needed to talk to this young guy? His potential, Mr. Rick. His potential, his wisdom, his insight, it stood over the violence that he was committing. Okay. I knew that, you know, he could be someone greater than what he was at that particular moment in his life. I just had to try to get him to understand that you're acting off of emotions, off of the bitter anger that you have. You're a better thinker than that. Slow up, tone it down, bro. You could accomplish the same thing and make the people understand who you are because you're going to be who you are anyway. Exactly. That is going to come to the surface about who. Because he was pushing that. Was he? <laughs> was he? He was bringing the noise to the people. I get it. You know, and in some instances, it wasn't even people that was challenging him. And at what point did you feel like he decided to listen to you? That's strange because I have a saying sometimes that water seeks its own level. Thank you. And he's always listened to me. We've always band together. We missed each other in a lot of different spots when we was coming up hustling. But when we connected, we connected from the ground floor up. We was all the way there. And when I'm telling you something, I'm telling you something that's for the better good. Yes, for the sir. greater good of yourself and others. So I like to say he had to listen. 
because mm -hmm. the information was on point and beneficial to him. Exactly. It wasn't something that could enhance my career or my lifestyle. Right. But it was something to say, yo, bro, slow up. You great so, so fashion, at what point did you decide that, hey, you know, I might want to gravitate toward this gentleman? Uh, well, Mr. Kenny Gilmore, he's something else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, very smart man, very charismatic, uh, smooth, uh, intelligent, and I liked the way he was doing his bid. Okay. You know, uh, he wasn't no pushover, but he was a thinker. You know, he got the same things accomplished that I was trying to accomplish with less violence. Right. He knew how to talk. Exactly. You know? So, being in prison, did you first start off angry? Yeah, I was angry because uh, I was in prison for a wrongful conviction. I did 27 years in prison for something I didn't do. I should have never been there. So quite naturally, I was angry. And you began to accept the fact that, hey, regardless of that, I'm going to be here. So how do I make the best of this? No, I wasn't trying to make the best of it. I was just going to do what I wanted to do. They gave me life. They said I was going to die in prison. I was going to never get out of jail. So I'm saying, you can lock me up in a cage. I'm not taking no orders. I'm not doing nothing. You tell me I'm going to do what I want to do now. Because you tell me I got to be here for the rest of my life. I don't, I don't want to hear nothing. Police couldn't tell me nothing. I knock them out and that's that. I'm going to do what I want to do. So at that point, sounded like, sounds like to me, you really needed the advice of Mr. King. Yes, I did. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, I so. Did. You began to listen and act toward what he was saying to you at what part in that journey? Uh, in Attica, we was both in Attica. We didn't been all over the New York State prison system together. Uh, he said he did 31 years, I did 27. Uh, I had an incident in Attica and <laughs> one of my mans I got stabbed in Kitty, Ohio. I'm very loyal, and uh, I was gonna get him. I was gonna retaliate, and you can see it all in my face. So Kenny told me, he said, uh, "Yo, listen, man, Shabar, uh, you're telegraphing it. <laughs> right? You know, you're telling them that they can <laughs> right. see it. You know, and people get nervous, and they're gonna react. So he told me, like, you, you got to calm down, you know, because you're scaring people. Exactly. Because people knew my reputation." and know when I'm coming, I'm coming. Now they right? getting ready. Yeah, so they getting ready, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So he was trying to save me from getting killed. <laughs> and not only killed, they tell the police on you. Yeah. Right. Everybody's not like us where they say, okay, well, we might as well do this. So they'll work all kinds of other schemes out to get you locked up and out of the picture. So right. it was my duty to protect my brother. Exactly. Said, Tone it down, brother, do what you're gonna do. Yeah. Because nobody's going to talk you out of that. That's who you right. are. But stop but, telegraphing. But stop telegraphing and letting the world know what you're going to do before you do it. Right. So at that point, did you take it down some? Yeah, I took it down. Definitely. I took it down. And, and how, did, how did life in prison change for you at that point? No, I just took it down for that incident. It ain't changed. Oh, just, <laughs> just for that, that, yeah, that incident. incident. Okay. You know, it was still going down. You know, more right. instances after that. But that incident there, I took heed to what he said and stopped telegraphing because I still got him. Right. You, know? you did You did time for that. Yeah. Went, went to the, the hole. Yeah. Right. So you're, you're, you're now in prison. You done went to the hole. Did they send you back to trial or back no, to no, court no. for that? No, no, I didn't get no time. It was in the newspaper, though. Okay. You know, the way I orchestrated and everything it was all in the newspaper. Why didn't they take you back to court for it? Because they really couldn't prove I did it. Oh, okay. Okay. And at that point, how I've, I've been in prison, so I guess I'm trying to search for something that I've experienced. Once that act is committed, th there, there's a certain change of things. Do, am I communicating? How, how, did, how did that change your prison life? Because now you got, you, you, you got this act of revenge that has taken place, but yet 
you got a gentleman standing over here saying, hey, man, let me holler at you. Did that affect you in a way to whereas you became a smoother person about how you take care of your business or did you just crank it up some? I took heed to what he was saying, you know, because like I say, he's a very intelligent brother and the way he was moving throughout the system. I used to watch him and I was like, okay. We used to call him the godfather in, in right. the penitentiary, you know, because he used to like have influenced a whole, a lot of people. He moves a lot of pieces in there, chess player, you know. Right. So, you know, that that's what I'm getting at, you know. You got the godfather here. He's willing to talk to you. You're willing to listen. But now the scenario changes. But because he's talking to you, you're kind of put in a position that now in so much space or in so many words that you're now representing a part of him because he ain't just wasting his time talking to people that ain't doing what he talking about. You know, they need to be doing for themselves. Mm -hmm. So how do you begin to correct yourself to make sure that you're worthy of what he's giving you? I just slowed down, you know, I started that, looking at I'm things, saying? started looking at things uh, differently and uh, from a distance. Mm -hmm. And I stepped back out myself and started observing more, you know what I'm saying? And he always told me, he said, um, he said, Fashion, you say hell of a guy. And you are always gonna be somebody if you can just get your temper under control. Thank you. That's what he always told me. So at that point, you began to realize, hey man, you know, I gotta smooth this thing out here because uh, it's gonna be more beneficial for me to be a thinker and a negotiator than a gorilla because the gor consistent gorilla in prison is going to end up in one space. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. Exactly. You know, so if you don't start thinking your way through these situations. You're going to get got. Yeah, see what I'm saying? You're going to get got. One or two places. It's either the penitentiary, more prison time, or dead. In my mind, looking at you, I would be like, well, we expect dude to get smooth about this thing. Is that how it Yeah, because uh, he was a money getter. That's all, that's all he did is hustle in the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. Move pieces and get money. So being I was his man, by me causing all this ruckus, would stop his business. See what I'm saying? So, you know, he loved me, but hey, man, I can't have you around me if you're going to be acting like this because I'm over here getting money. That ain't beneficial. You know, that ain't beneficial to him. <laughs> <laughs> Which wasn't beneficial to a lot of other people because we provided See what for I'm others. Saying. We, it wasn't just about me accumulating the funds or hustling for myself. We took care we, of them. We took care of everybody. If you were somebody, I don't care where you was, just a gentleman. A respectable Thank person. You. We made sure that you, 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 you here, take care of this. Make, you know, your family might need rent money. We was making that kind of See money that I'm we saying. distributed enough across the board. But Mr. Rick, that worked two kind of ways. That it benefited a lot of people because they had a strong hope that I could change them. Yeah. Because he was that wow. That's what I'm talking you know, about. I'm trying they, to get yeah, there. They was, damn. Let's hope KG could get to him because this, nigga this is guy is ridiculous. What? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we hope Mr. Rick, you know, you got the, the fake gangsters. Right. He, he want to put them in their place. I said, bro, how, how are they bothering us? <laughs> right. What, what's wrong with you? Man, that sucker walking around here like he built, like he ain't, he ain't about it. He ain't about that life. I said, man, get your ass over here, man. What's wrong okay. with you, bro? Yeah. Hey, man, that ain't our business. He would listen. Sometimes he would leave me, sneak away, and still get the guy. I say, boy, you too much, man. Hey, man, this can't go like this. But I seen so much potential in him. To the point, Mr. Rick, to fast forward a little, even when he came home, I owned a medical clinic at this time. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, Shabazz home. I said, what? <laughs> say, said, boss, he want to see you. He coming down here. I said, don't tell this fool where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, he said that. Well, true story, right? Said, true yeah. story. You couldn't believe I'm like, this is my man. He said, and he don't want to see me? He might come right on this corner, and as we're talking, if somebody looks this wrong, he it's might go and kill It's going down. I said, bro, now that's the only reason I didn't want to see my brother. Right. 
but I didn't know he had corrected the emotional that's what, damage that's what that he had. About. And he said, man, are you crazy? He said, I was so hurt when I heard that. I said, this is the only reason why. I said, our reputation precedes us. I lived with you. Right. I've seen what you I know did. you. I know you. <laughs> I might know you even second to it better than knowing okay. yourself. I said, so that was my concern. Because right. if you act up right here, I got to go with you. And I'm not trying to get in there. You're going to tear down life. everything I got. It was two sides of me. As you say, Shabar, boxing Shabar. That's who I was in jail. That's that gorilla. That's that gorilla. So I left him in jail. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I left him in jail. Mm -hmm. Before I went to jail, I was fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, just about money, you know, a gentleman. But when they threw me in that environment, it turned me into something that I didn't want to be or wasn't. But that's the only way that I can you get my point across yeah. to them people in there. You got all kind of people in there. See, the police run them in there with fear. So I said, well, I got to do the same thing then. Right. You respect the police, but you ain't going to respect me. And I'm talking <laughs> right. to the police. He right. ain't never done nothing. Probably shot a deer. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm going to put the fear of God in you the same way they got you. I get it. So when you came home, you began to gravitate closer to Mr. King? I was looking for it. It took me four years to find him. Finally found him. Yeah. And that was because of my situation, Mr. Right. Rick. I had uh, gotten extremely sick, diabetes, mm -hmm. I was drinking, and I went into a shelter. M mind you, I said I owned a medical clinic, you know, I had my own home, lost all of that. Went, and it was always about me, meaning I never looked to you to, to fashion anyone else to assist me, help me. I had to get myself together. And for four years, consistently, which is, is revealed on my social media, Mm -hmm. He was reaching out, trying to, what are you doing? You don't belong in no shelter. Right. I got you. Where are you at? What's wrong with you? And even when a friend of ours named K. Mel spoke to me, I said, K. Mel, I just got to get myself together. I had gotten so sick. And, um, and what I really probably didn't realize was how much the penitentiary had affected me. Right. Serving 31 years behind the bars. I mean, we was in <laughs> boxes shipped all over the state, kicked out of prisons. They would say, get these guys out of here, get them out of here. So that had taken its toll on me. Correct. Unbeknowing to myself at the okay. time. So not having addressed all those issues, I sank, I went down. In any event, I went into a shelter. Mm -hmm. My choice, I had other options, but I said, right. let me do it this way. And when I did that, uh, he was searching for me for four years, trying to reach out and pick me back up. As a brother should. Right. You know, that's when he wanted to show his friendship when I was right. down on my luck. He said, are you crazy? You know, man. That ain't you. Yeah, that ain't you. You Kenny Gilmore. You KG. You don't do that. And, and, and we out here for you. I don't give a F what nobody else is going to do. I'm coming to get you. Right. Four years. I'm, I'm, when I finally open up my social media, I see all these messages and, and inboxes. From him. From him. I said, Wow. To take you back a step, Mr. Rick, when he left me the first time in prison, sent visits up to me. Wow. Sent money to me. Made sure I was all right. Every step he made where he climbed that ladder, I got a picture. Wow. You know, he shared his experience. He's always showed me what I meant to him. Now, that just took me where I wanted to go. So, sounds to me like you had in your mind the definition of what an OG is. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were looking at with Mr. King? Most definitely. Ex express that a little bit for me. I know he was an OG. I know I'm an OG. So, I got to pull another OG up. You know, right. I, I can't leave him down or turn my back on him, you know. There's a bond here. There's a bond there. Yeah. You know? So now, tell the audience, for me, how you would define an OG. An uh, OG, speaking about myself, I went through the ranks. I went through all the trials and tribulations to be able to call myself an OG. No faking. Right. Like you hear my man here say, uh, I've been through it. I was stabbed nine times. Penitentiary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, 
So I paid my dues. Right. You know, in the streets, uh, before I went to the penitentiary, I was rich. I owned a 17-room mansion, five cars and a boat. I had 30 women in that lifestyle throughout that their career. I mean, I just went through the ranks, wow. right? And uh, never wavering. What of that did you see in Mr. King that allowed you to start applying the definition of OG to yourself? Yeah, one, one that's able to help influence somebody else for the better. That's what I'm talking about. What, what did you see in, or what did you hear and see I seen, from this gentleman? I seen the skills of a mentor and a teacher in this brother here, something that I am now myself. Thank you. Go ahead, that, that's where I wanna go. You know, from, like I said, from going through all the trials and tribulations that I went through, now I can teach someone else from my experience. So hopefully they don't have to go through what I went through because they might not make it. I mean, being stabbed nine times, you, you might take one stab and then that might be it. Right. So I was blessed and lucky to make it through all them battles and wars. You know what I'm saying? How did you define that space for yourself? This, I think I could answer for both of us, meaning me and fashion. Mm -hmm. During the times we came, I, I've been in the game since 60s, 70s, I was, you know, mm -hmm. older school guy, and, and, and him as well. The baton was passed to us. Like you said, the barber with you. Yes. Well, we looked out our windows, windows we seen hustlers and pimps and, and guys slinging, and they educated us about the life. You don't tell, you stand up, you be a solid guy. And when they were educating us slash training us, mm -hmm. we incorporated those talents and skills. Yes. And we were tested along the way. And each time we stood the test of time, we knew what we should do, what we should not do. And we wanted to emulate yes. these kind of guys because yes. they were men in our eyes. Yes. These were stand up men. Solid and, that, guys. So, and that's how we grew up. Right. When we were young men, we weren't young men. We were grown ass men. <laughs> right. We were doing little midgets. Yeah, we were doing grown <laughs> right. ass men shit. The people were like, oh my God. But we were respectful to our neighborhoods, to the mothers of the hoods. We were like, yo, come on, we'll take you across the street. Let us pay for this for you. We had elements in us that refined and defined who we are yes. today. I mean, it actually says what we went through, who we are, and, and I'm happy to be able to say that all those things helped perfect me and turn me out to be who I am. And, and we can see the development of it in both of you. You know, for me, this conversation begins to happen because you know that person is in there. So how do I bring this person to, or when do I become determined to bring this person to the forefront? It, 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 it was that process. That was the beginning to the process. I said, listen, I gotta get myself together. And, and I don't want to burden anyone else with that. I'm Kenny Gilmore. Thank you. Now I have to act and conduct myself as though I'm Kenny Gilmore. And that Say meant it going in, I had to act and conduct myself as though I was Kenny Gilmore. Thank you. You know, there's a certain expectation that comes along with being Kenny Gilmore. Man, come on with it. And I had to live it. And living it was the easy part. Hello, because you're already but, it. Because I'm already it, but I was acting foolishly. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't what my brother and Conrad just said, that I was a thinker, you know. So now I'm acting outside of myself. So I had to redefine myself, get back within myself, and come back to the forefront of saying, okay, I'm back. I may not be as healthy as I once was, but I had to get back. And now I'm here today at the grace and mercy of God and at the grace and mercy of you, Fashion, and you, Mr. Rick, to be able to say, yo, you got a great one here. We're going to take a break right here, and we're going to come back. I, I don't want you to leave because this conversation is going to get even more interesting. So... We'll be back, and while we're gone, don't forget, subscribe. Subscribe because you really want to hear these conversations. So we'll be right back. This show has the intent to define what a real OG is, what an original OG is. My partner and I have developed a method to ensure that if someone should sit in front of this OG logo, 
that they have been authenticated and found to be true in their history as far as what an OG is. Welcome to the Original OGs, and I'm your host, Mr. Rick. We have a very exciting guest today, Miss Deborah Coco. But I'm gonna start this off a little differently. I'm going to allow Fashion to introduce his friend. She's now our friend. So Fashion, I want you to introduce Miss Coco. Explain a little bit about your relationship. She's your friend and now she's our friend. And we're, we're gonna get into talking about what it is that she does. But we want to know a little bit how, a little bit about how you and she became friends. So let's start there. Okay, this is the fabulous and most beautiful Deborah Coco, <laughs> which is my friend, very dear close friend. And uh, she has a long history, which you'll get into. But uh, it all started from all you hip hoppers. She is, was the host from Video Music Box on Ralph McDaniels. And, uh, how me and her became friends is because she's in the industry, I'm in the industry, and uh, we just linked up. Well, well, stop for a minute. Because during the interviews here with you, we haven't talked about you being in the industry. Shed some light on that. Yeah, I do a lot of things. <laughs> well, it, it's okay, but we, we want to talk about this space we're in now. Yeah, I have... Uh, I have a couple of music artists okay. uh, that I promote and produce and manage. Who are they? Oh, they're no name brands right now. Oh, they're not no name because this is <laughs> where we make names. They're up and coming. Artists. Oh, this is the show where we make names. That's right. So. Okay. Chi Chi the Baker's Man. Okay. Uh, uh, I never got so many names. I got a couple girls and a couple more guys. You know, they're rappers? Rappers and uh, R&B singers. Okay, okay. So, in the journey of promoting them, you reached out to Miss Coco. Yes. What was that like? It's fascinating. Yes, tell us. It was, tell it was fascinating, you know, to uh, meet Miss Deborah Coco. You know. Okay, in my in my research on Miss Coco, I find it to be a very fascinating journey there. You know, so I know you just mentioned his name. I'm very bad at names, but the gentleman that you started out with. Ralph McDaniels. Ralph McDaniels, mm -hmm. and the name of his show was? Video Music Box. Video Music Box. Legendary. Legendary, yes. <laughs> Help me out a little bit there. Take me, take me back there. Okay, well, for those who don't know, as a young girl, mm -hmm. we all, everyone in New York, tri-state area, used to run home after school every day to catch the latest videos, to, to find out the latest trends in fashion, and to just watch Video Music Box, <laughs> you know? Was this music or fashion? It was a tell it had a little bit of both okay. because through watching the music videos, mm -hmm. we learned how to dress, so okay. to speak. Okay. What was hip to wear. We watched the artists. Next thing you know, they had on Converse, we're gonna wear Converse. Okay. They have Bengal earrings on, we're gonna wear the Bengal okay. earrings. So the hip hop artists back in that time, they basically shaped fashion and our culture, the way we spoke and and the things that we listened to. So okay. mm -hmm. So, how did you get involved with him? What happened was, um, fast forward, mm -hmm. 15 years later, I decided wow. to do my own television show. Okay. When I first started out, that's when I was a young girl, elementary school, running home to watch the show. Um, but as I got older, I ended up doing an internship at BET. I actually, oh, really? Yeah, I actually interned on 106 in Park wow. with Free and AJ during that last season before they retired. So I was meeting so many artists on set, you know, Erica Badu, Buju Bantan, just so many different mm -hmm. people. And I was coming across a, a lot of local pioneers in my okay. area. Um, for those who know some of the pioneers from New York, that consisted of Grandmaster Kaz, Mighty Mike C, The Village Four, 
Treacherous Three, like all oh, wow. these hip hop yeah, groups, yeah, we heard about. But mm-hmm. when they were coming up, they really didn't have music videos. So we cool. heard their names, but we didn't know visually what they looked like or who they right. were, you know? Mm-hmm. We know a lot of times in the beginning when the artist started doing music, you would see on the cover, it may be something totally different, but it wouldn't actually show the artist itself. Yes. So that was the thing that made Video Music Box so big. Because mm. Wu-Tang, um, like, you know, we have an upcoming guests, like Wu-Tang, um, Nas, Jay-Z, um, Remy Ma, all these artists was coming up in the street, Nicki Minaj, mm-hmm. all of these different artists in New York. And Ralph had the vision to go into these different venues and capture these artists in the very beginning. Wow. You know, so, and then later on, years later, they're like phenomenal stars now. Right. You know, so it's just that vision to see someone, to see that they have talent and to capture that, you know, so... I don't know if you know, on Showtime now, they have a big documentary on Video Music Box and Ralph McDaniels, and it highlights just the same components that I just mentioned, so, okay. yes. So how, how in your internship, you, you're interning with BT, mm-hmm. and then you meet this gentleman. I'm kind of, sort of. <laughs> okay. I was, I was actually approached by a woman in Vegas. She okay. was watching my social media, and she was like, I see you know everybody. You're like everywhere. Wow. At this time I came out, I, I, you know, I just happened to be around, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of different artists like Grandmaster Kaz and a couple of other people. And she was like, I would love to do a podcast with you. Wow. And she was in Vegas. So I was like, um, tr- you know, traveling and things of that nature. I was like, it really didn't seem doable for me at the time. So I decided to do my own show. I mean, I learned about production working at BET. And, you know, I had all the skills and and the equipment to do it at home. So I started my own show Mm -hmm. called Just Give Me the Mic, you know, about 11, 12 years ago, right in my my home. So uh, for the younger audience out here, and not necessarily the younger artists, how did you get involved in the internship of BET, how, how, how did that develop for you? Well, I actually was attending um, a college mm-hmm. doing mass communication was my major. Okay. So we had to find an internship to do to complete our credits to graduate. Mm-hmm. And I happened to know a friend that worked in the mailroom. At BET. <laughs> at BET. And wow. he said, I could get you in, in the internship program. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> okay, well, we were delivering that mail. Here's my yeah. resume. Bam. Okay, throw that around. And um, they actually called me and, and I came in. But, you know, that was a very pivotal time for me because I was doing what I love, my passion, mm-hmm. but I was also working in the financial industry. I was actually working at the New York Stock Exchange at that time. Okay. On the trading floor. You and, and, Ke- and Keith Sweat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to make a decision whether to follow this lane and mm-hmm. do like um, minimum wage, you know, you first come in, yeah, sure. entry level sure. position or keep the financial money that I had. So the only way to kind of make it all balance out was to do my own show, mm-hmm. keep my job, pay my bills, Hello. <laughs> pay my bills, right? And keep my job but still follow my passion. And um, it just grew and grew. It grew from blog talk. It, it went on to television. And Well, now I'm still at, at a television station. My show actually is 10 years later on Channel 68 in the Bronx in New York and in Manhattan mm-hmm. and also in Connecticut. So cool. you can catch it now this day. It's, it's a sit down talk show. Cool. Where we interview a variety of people like, like, like yourself. This. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So, you know, I know there are a lot of you out there that want to be involved in this, but you have to develop the skills. Mm-hmm. You, you have to get some formal education because that's what's going to introduce you to this world. Like you said, right. you know, right. you knew somebody in the mailroom. <laughs> right, you never know. Hey, right. but that turned out to be a great opportunity because of a great relationship. Right. So now you're pursuing your dream, but you still have a job that you have to maintain so that you can pay your bills. Right. So now that kicks into some different creativity. Right. Oh, well, I'll just start my own. I'll start my own. I was like, the, I felt like a, a female, like a superwoman, right? In the daytime, I got on my suit and everything at work. And then after five, I got on my, you know, Kango cap and my right. Pumas. And I'm out here doing events and hosting. It, it was like living two different worlds. But they were two beautiful worlds. Yes. You know? Yes. You know, one is because I have to make a living. 
The other is because this is my dream, right. you know, right. and that has to developed into where you are now. Yes. Let's talk about that a little bit. And right now, again, I, I have the show and um, it just branched off. Like, you know, I started, you know, trying different avenues within the entertainment mm-hmm. industry as far as acting. So I'm also doing acting okay. now as well, which I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. I've been doing that for two years. So okay. I have a variety of different projects, different roles. So I actually took, you know, when you're running your own business, like you're in control. True. You're doing production, you're booking your artists. Like, I was a one woman team. I actually took a production course. Like, I actually took a, a field production and studio production course. Because I figure if somebody on your team can't make it, the show still needs to move on. Hello. Right? Mm-hmm. And as females, we always take it, well, I'm not going to say most females, but mm-hmm. I know some females, they rely on the team. Mm-hmm. I'm very hands on. Like, I need to make sure that at all times, I could be productive and my engine can keep rolling, so to speak, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so I learned everything about what the field that you love to do, you should learn all aspects of it to always be covered. I never had to compromise myself, you know, in order to jump into situations. I was able to say no and pick and choose the right situations for me. So exactly. that was important. Intelligently. Right, intelligently. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> So fashion, when as you were developing a relationship with Miss Coco, how did you see that fitting into your world? Well, that's my baby right there. <laughs> well, we understand that part. You know, we're, we're talking about the other part. <laughs> the professional. Yeah, we, we get that part. <laughs> uh, um, she's very intelligent, very bright, you know, and... Uh, she helped me with a lot of things. I learned a lot from her as far as the industry. Right. You know. She was able to kind of guide you in certain ways. Exactly. Well, Fashion reached out to me later on, and he connected me with some people that was on his side, okay. you know, who were doing events that needed a host and things of that nature. So he was able to return the favor and bring me some business. So, okay. And God forbid they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Fashion was on <laughs> He was okay. on it, okay? He was making phone calls. He was on it. So I always felt protected in our relationship that we have in, in all regards, you know, which oh, was good. Cool. Yeah. So now this show is called The Original OGs, and we the deal OG. with OGs. Male and female, mm-hmm. young and old. Mm-hmm. You know, some are aspiring OGs. You know, some are actually in this space. So, for you, how, how would you define an O an OG? The original, the one that paves the way for others. You know, um, some people consider me to be. I do. OG. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that in my circle, I have inspired a lot of females to step out on their own and grab the mic. There's so many people that I've interviewed on my set and mm-hmm. my platform who have turned around and now created their own shows. Wow. When they see how, you know, how it's actually done. I've had many people call me, ask me questions, just and, and I'm free with the information. Mm-hmm. I feel like if this is something you want to try, give it a try. Right. There's enough room for everybody. You know, mm-hmm. to make it, and we all have something very unique and different right. about the way we do things. So why not help somebody else? You know, share experiences exactly. with each other, and hopefully somebody can learn. Some people could hopefully avoid some pitfalls or whatever. You know, may take a different route once they receive that information. So exactly, that's the key. That's, that's the, key. the key. It's really you have to really listen. Listening is more important than actually speaking because you need to know where to take your conversation. Thank you. And you have some people that are so stuck on a script that, you know, they don't let the conversation easily flow. Thank you. I've watched people do it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that interview looked forced or it looked like it was memorized. It doesn't have that natural feel exactly. to it. So, and you definitely have that, you well, know? Well, you know, I, I sit with you beforehand and I said to you, you know, hey, look, we're going to tell, I'm not going to tell your story. You're going to tell your story. Your story is the story of an original OG. Yes. 
Yes, they call me the hip hop Oprah. And they, <laughs> Come on with it, now. They call me the hip hop Oprah. You know. Let's talk about that. That huh? that just doesn't pop up out of the sky. No, there has no. to be reasoning behind that. Share it with us. It, it's the way that I make people feel that I'm told Thank on you. set. Like I can meet somebody for the very first time, and they will walk away feeling motivated, inspired. They will walk away feeling like we've had this long relationship because I really highlight people and make it about them like you and i yes that, that's the same much type of feel the, right i feel that's what we get I paid. just met him 15 mm-hmm. minutes ago and i feel like we've known each other that's what we get paid to do you know right. make sure you focus on the right things you know Thank you. And, the, and i have the same kind of end result the end goal i want the audience to walk away learning something feeling some type of way, feeling better than how they started or inspired. Yes. There's certain goals that we're trying to reach by the time we finish a segment. You exactly. Know? Mm-hmm. And most of all, to return. Hit the subscribe button, follow us. Right. Learn as much information as you can from us. Use it the way you want to use it. We're not here to give you information and tell you how to use it. Right. We're just here to provide information for you. And then you can take it and digest it and regurgitate it however you feel like. Right, create your own blueprint with it. Exactly. You know? That's what we're talking about. So, fashion, what, what do you and Miss Coco intend for the future of your relationship? Marriage. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I wasn't trying to go there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, I kind of already... <laughs> understood that so I'm saying in the arena of entertainment <laughs> okay this is live this is being recorded yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. so now that we got that out right. of the way you see what I'm saying I'm, yeah, I'm no you can moment. respond to that if you like <laughs> me we'll do that off camera I'll respond see, not, but that's a good answer you know, right. because see, that wasn't, hey, man, I hate, what? <laughs> so, you know, I get it. But business-wise, entertainment-wise. Yeah. Um, well, as you know, I'm doing a lot of projects uh, right now. And um, I'm definitely going to uh, have her as a part of it. Whatever I do, I always call her and ask what she think and do she want to be involved with it. And continue to tell me about the relationship between you and fashion a little bit about how that looks, where you're gonna go with it in the future, some of the things that you have going on. Allow us to understand what we can look forward to. Okay. Okay, well, my relationship with fashion, I hope it continues to grow because, you know, when you have a person in your corner, you have to really appreciate that and value that because you know in this industry, it's not many people that come across that you can fully trust. So. I'm open to possibilities. I mean, working on some films, doing more hosting, more shows, more artist development and things of that nature. I think that is a good thing that we could possibly talk about doing in the future. Um, Right now, I'm currently working on a documentary myself where- great. Yeah, film company actually approached me from doing some acting and they said, but a lot of people don't know your background. They don't know a lot of things that you've done. So we want to to put together this film for you. So it's it's the Deborah Coco story coming out, hopefully maybe May, June, so look out for that. Um, If you are in the tri-state area, you can catch the show 10 p.m. Sunday night on Channel 68 in Manhattan. And, and, and channel 22 at 8 p.m. Cool. You can use them all over YouTube. Just search Deborah Coco. I mean, I'm Google. I got so many pages on there I get of it. all the different things that I've done hosting, rap events, women empowerment events, oh, charity wow. events, domestic violence events. So cool. I don't only do music and hip hop, I also make sure I cover topics that are important to our community as well. Very good. So, I mean, I'm just doing a lot of things, y'all. And check out some of my acting projects. Just Google me and you'll see what's coming up. And thank you so much for oh, you're more allowing than more. me to come on your platform and share my story. It was Very, my pleasure. I really enjoyed myself. And thank you, Fashion. Fashion <laughs> is responsible for that. And yes. uh, thank you, sir, because... Very good interview, very enlightening interview, and we look forward to more of you in the future. Thank you. For the viewing audience, if they wanted to retrieve information concerning 
OGs, original OGs, where would you suggest that they look for that information? In general, I mean, you can search, you can ask someone that you know has that, may have that knowledge or may have affiliations with some OGs, go to some trusted people, or they can also tune into your show, The Original OG, and find out what's going on. That, that, that would be my first choice. Right. I took y'all all around. <laughs> That's okay. Good places. Good okay, places. Right, right. But, but yeah. definitely here. The original OG show. And that's where you'll find people like Miss Coco. Mm -hmm. Right here on the original OGs. Yes. And Thank with you. that, we're going to close because it's about that time. So it's about that we look time. forward to seeing you in the future. You original yes. OG, baby. I Without a doubt. I've been certified, y'all. Yes. <laughs> and that's it. That's all. We have created this show so that men and women alike can come forward and tell their truth. If you have people that you believe to be an OG, go into the comment section, write us, let us know where to find the history so that we can authenticate it, bring them on the show, tell their story so that we can add to the American history. That's it. That's all.